So this is a freshwater generator. It's full of salt. Let's clean it up. Today, we have a routine job on this Alpha Laval freshwater generator. We're going to clean its plate type heat exchangers of salt. If you are curious on what a freshwater generator is and why it's important on board, you can check my operation and theory video. But the basic overview is that our flash type evaporators take seawater and under vacuum evaporate it. Afterwards, it's condensed in a condenser to create distillate water, which we use on board for various purposes, such as showers, boilers, and our cooling water system. The issue today is that in our heat exchangers, deposits can be formed over time, and routinely we disassemble and clean them. So, let's get to work. First, as usual, we complete the paperwork and permits. Then, we will isolate electrically after mechanically the machine, in this case the freshwater generator. Finally, we put the appropriate lockout and tagouts. If the freshwater generator was recently used, then we can release all the vacuum using the vacuum breaker valve or plug as seen here. With this, we can safely begin disassembly. We start by hooking up a chain block and wrap a sling around the anchor points. We will after loosen all the cover bolts around the shell. Inside the shell, we can see the demister. I mentioned this element in my previous video. It's a wire mesh that when steam passes through, will catch steam particles with carryover salt. We will remember to wash this later. Here we can see our two heat exchangers, the heater and the condenser. As seen in previous videos, they are in charge of heating the seawater and condensing the steam produced inside the shell. We will soon see what's inside the plates. So, before removing the pressure plate of any plate type heat exchangers, first you must measure the distance between the plate and the end of the stud. Write it down nearby and try to keep copies. This information is critical for reassembly to prevent leaks or over tightening. After this, we can start to evenly loosen the plate, but don't focus on one spot. Evenly loosening all nuts will avoid deformation of the internal plates, and soon enough, the pressure plate will come off. With this, we can see the internal heater titanium plates. Here, we can already see pieces of salt that were giving us high salt concentration in our distillate water. Remove all the internal plates until you're left with just the front plate. Here, it's important to note that there are rubbers between the shell and the pipes. If you have a vacuum generation failure, you can inspect this rubber and see if it's broken. If they are broken, atmospheric air can begin to enter the shell, reducing vacuum generation. In my experience, I usually like to put the same plates back in the same order they were taken out. However, like most plate heat exchangers, they follow a configuration, because not all of these plates are the same. Some are for seawater, and others are for jacket water. But I'll explain that later. Let's move on. Look at this. So much salt on these plates. You can knock on the titanium plates with a wooden object and see those chunks fall off. Also very important to check the rubber gaskets on the plate if there are any broken or loose. 
consequences of broken or loose rubber gaskets can cause vacuum leaks inside the shell, as well as cross-contamination between seawater and jacket water, also jacket water loss, which is a closed system, or high salt concentration in our distillate production due to pure seawater leaking from our condenser to our distillate tray. As we physically clean, we continue putting back the plates in the same order to not lose track. If it does happen, don't worry. In reassembly, I'll show you the configuration of this freshwater generator. However, in the manuals, should be shown for others. Since these plates had very heavy salt deposits, we will also make a 10% concentrated solution of the Uniter chemical Descalex, as it's recommended in the Uniter's chemical manual. This is an acid cleaner compound formulated to help us remove rust and scale deposits. And we will be using the soak immersion bath method. Remember, as with any chemical, use the proper PPE as recommended by its material data safety sheet. In this case, we will use face mask, eye protection, and a dusk mask. To make this solution, we will create a known volume of 100 liters of water using buckets and then afterwards add 10 kilograms of the Scalex. This will create us a 10 kilogram over 100 liter solution, which is a 10% mass volume solution. First, we fill with water. Then we place the plates and have an air hose to create turbulence. We will put in the demister so it'll also get chemically cleaned. And finally, we will add the 10 kilograms of Descalex from Uniter gradually. Just look at all that vapor. Don't use this in a place with little ventilation. The red color will show us that the acid has strength. So we will scrub the plates along with soaking and air agitation. With this, we will remove the micro deposits of salt. Afterwards, to neutralize the acid out of our plates, we can use an alkaline solution with a chemical also from Uniter called alkalinity control in a low 5% concentration. However, if you don't have this chemical on hand, you can also use any alkaline replacement like detergent. After the chemical cleaning, it looks much better now. The demister still looks like it needs some cleaning, but the plates are good to go. Let's just double check the rubbers to see if there are any loose or broken that can be replaced and fixed. Loose rubbers can be fixed with contact glue cement. This will keep them in place during reassembly. However, if the rubber is too deformed, you should replace it completely. Now, let's talk about the differences between plates. Seawater plates have an opening on top to allow the stream to escape to the shell. And jacket water holes are sealed. The jacket water plates have openings on the jacket water holes to allow flow throughout the plate and the seawater holes as well as small opening to allow seawater dosing to the seawater plate behind it. So the flow goes like this. The jacket water in the jacket water plate heats a dose of seawater behind in the seawater plate, which escapes from the top part of the plate and evaporates later in the shell. Afterwards, this steam goes to the condenser, so it can condense and produce distillate water. So ensure that if you're replacing rubbers, you make sure that the right rubber is used for the right plate. With the plates and demister cleaned, 
the shell also cleaned, rubber secured, and taking advantage to clean the selenometer sensor as you can see here, we can start reassembly. If you kept order, then it will be simple to put back. If not, follow the configuration shown in the manual. In this freshwater generator, it is front plate, jacket water plate, sea water plate, and then jacket water plate alternatively until you reach the end plate and finally the pressure plate. Once all plates are in place, we can evenly tighten until reaching close to our previous measurements. Remember that if we place new rubbers, the thickness might be more. After tightening, we need to ensure that there are no leaks. So, we will slowly open the main engine jacket water and check for leaks. If you see dripping, tighten more, but be careful. Don't allow too much heating to flow through the plates. Remember that this is very hot water and we have no cooling. So, we open slightly and then close. Once tightened, ensuring that there's no leaks and secure, we can repeat this process for the condenser, which also has its own plate difference up top. Cleaning is much more simple due to the low risk of scale deposits, but nonetheless, we also need to clean them. But following this procedure, it'll be easy. After everything internally is assembled and ensured that we have no leaks, we need to place the front cover. We ensure that the gasket is in place and in good condition because a broken front cover gasket can cause vacuum generation failure. After placing the front cover, we will tighten the machine to close it using a torque wrench with a specific torque. In this case, 35 Newton meters, not so much. Finally, we will put the machine back in service to ensure that the salt content doesn't go up. Look at this, amazing. Distillate water is finally being produced. Think about all this hard work. Next time you take a shower on a ship or enjoy a nice glass of water on board success and nothing else seafair. Till next time.